Hey guys, welcome to part two of the DDD DAC building process that I have. In the last video, we ended up talking about the staple cards you need for your DDD deck, or really any car, any deck in general. And then we also talked about the staples specifically for Master Duel and how there's about 15 cards, give or take, that people use and throw in their decks simply to stay in the top tier status. Moving on, let's take a look again at the Master Duel website. As you can see here, I reloaded the page from before. Things are pretty much the same and the tier list hasn't really changed at all. Not surprising. What is it called? Strong Will. We got G Golems. We got the Ishizu cards like Kelbell and so on. But it looks like they haven't really made much of an impact. But granted, it's only been like a day or two. So there's really nothing that we can look at. Runic Sprite is still, is still a thing. Sprite with uh, Frogs is still a thing. Branded Despia is the only one in Tier 2, followed by a bunch of Tier 3 cards. For the purpose of this example, we are currently only looking at Silver Rank, because that's unfortunately where I, am. I ended a season. So I'm kind of stuck there, and I'm not going to really be able to test fully until I get to at least Platinum. So this is the Tier Lists, and let's take a quick look at the top deck. As you can see, nothing has really changed either here. Uh, we just have to look out for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Blue Wonderies are no longer as much of a threat as they used to be, at least not that I think about it. Let's take a look at Diamond 1. Uh, nothing's really changed. The most annoying card is really Dimension Shifter, Mist Valley Apex, but we can easily bait that. They have this uh, Pot of Prosperity, which is going to be annoying, especially if they end up drawing it. They get ditched six of their cards, and then of course they get evenly matched from it. So for, for our purposes, we don't actually use Ash Blossom, so of course we can't negate this. So we're kind of gambling there. They have two infinite impermanents and then two books of moon not sure why and then of course you have your standard staples the most annoying card also is going to be apollo's bowl of the goddess and that's really it for them what else we got we got oh actually i mentioned before that i did never really face map next before so let's take a quick look and what they have this one's from a diamond five looks pretty standard they have ghost bell uh, you can discard this card and negate the activation when a card adds from your graveyard to the hand deck or extra deck special summons from the grave this actually could be a little annoying for us see math next they have this guy or the one this monster here you, can, you cannot special summon monsters on the extra deck except cybers you target that monster against a thousand attack okay so that's our summon then we got math next sigma if you control no monsters in the extra monster zone with this card is in your hand you can special summon this card of course they're going to uh, exceed summon into yep that rank or prime tech math deck cards you control will be destroyed by card effect and you can attach one xyz material that's fine i don't care about that you can detach up to three materials and choose one and choose that many effects okay so first effect send one random card from your opponent's hand to the graveyard we don't really mind that send one monster your opponent controls to the graveyard that is a problem uh primarily because it doesn't target send one spell and trap card your opponent controls to the graveyard so most likely they're going to use the hand or the second effect to send to the grave which is fine just have to bait it out too and then the most annoying one is Halibertian. you can trip one monster especially summon one level four math like monster from your hand or graveyard if this card is x heat summon you can detach two or four materials from this card so it's two plus level four so of course i can make all of it by having two materials add one level four from your deck to your hand add one spell and trap card from your hand to your hand use the, each effect once per turn so you can actually use all of them if it really wanted to that's not so bad we got link Ariba, we got update jammer which is a pain in the ass oh they actually end up using the golem card what do these do your cooling monsters are unaffected by monster effect activated on your opponent's field your co-linked monsters so since this has up left and right that means that this has to be one of the cards in the regular monster zone and this one yep this one points down opponent so co-linked meaning that as soon as this guy gets to the bottom if there's other monsters co-linked on the left and right in the monster zone none of them are affected by it it's doable but i think it would be a pain in the ass do they have anything that can go left or right they have regular transco talker which they're not really going to be using they have the other g golem card and target one earth link monster in your graveyard special summon to your zone this card points if you do okay so they can they can essentially make this crazy link all right rambling aside let's move on to the master duel deck here we have my season 15 ddd version 1.0 we have the stable cards we talked about before 25 um, dd monsters and dd cards and then my five master duel staples as I mentioned before, I will not be using the other 10 staples because frankly, those are annoying to me and I do not want to win simply because of a hand trap. But that's just me. Here we have the extra deck monsters. So right off the bat, let's go search the DD cards. I didn't throw in Vice King Requiem, so we're gonna throw them in there. 
I do like DD Dog mainly because of all the uh, ex extra deck cards that are used. And not to mention, I can use them as a um, substitute for a second Flame King Gengish. So that's how that worked. So I don't need the second one. Uh, in TCG, it's not that useful to have what you call a Typhon in the grave because there's a lot of cards that banish from the grave in the TCG. So Master Duel, we can still use it. Of course, I'm going to use Dark Armageddon. There's Typhon. Since we're going to be running into a lot of runic players in the lower tiers, we're definitely going to throw in at least one of these. I don't suspect we're going to run into a lot of Labyrinth monsters, but if we do, we definitely need to start adding Dark Contract of the Errors because their trap card, um, it's called Dimensional Barrier. Literally, all they have to choose is Pendulum, and we cannot do anything for the entire duel. Like, literally nothing, which is pretty terrible. I like Newton primarily for the scale, and we can technically ditch a card with Copernicus and then add it to the hand with Newton. So that's why I like to have at least one. There's a few options with it, especially if we draw into it late game, or rather we don't have any dark contracts anymore available to us. We can, you know, recycle them with Newton from the graveyard as well. Let's see what else we got. Uh, I am going to be throwing in one dark contract of the Eternal Darkness. Since we're going to be seeing Flu Wonderies, I definitely want to throw this in there. And not to mention, Branded Despia uses Super Palm Polymerization, so we can use Eternal Darkness so at the bare minimum we don't have to worry about our monsters being targeted. Or even theirs, for that matter. What else do I want to throw in here? Uh, that's really it. Unfortunately, my deck is not useful to use Supreme King Kaiser, but it's a fun card to add. It's just never really had an opportunity to summon it. Again, because, you know, I just don't run that way. So none of these decks currently run. For example, Runic Sprite does not run any field spell cards except for Runic Fountain, which is annoying, but as, but as long as we summon uh, Bright Armageddon, we're fine. So I don't know if I'm going to be adding in Valence World cards this time around. We're definitely going to be throwing in for Staples one for one. We're definitely going to throw in two Dark Ruler No Mores. I like Monster Reborn, you know, target out. Um, Ragnarok. In this case, I'm going to be running two. I love Pendulum Reborn. A great card to top deck into. Wonder XYZ, since the top deck is Runic Sprite, we're most likely not going to be able to use it properly. Unfortunately, also with Ishizu tier. Um, well, I'm sorry, not tier. Just the Ishizu cards. I'm assuming people are going to be experimenting with those. Uh, also, here are a list of cards that I have that I may or may not use. Uh, for example, I like Trigodia. A lot of monsters are level 8, especially for, you know, fusion decks that love to run uh, level 8 monsters like Branded Despia. That's a cool card because we have level 8 monsters in our deck. Uh, another card we can throw in there is Curse Necrofear. Now that each runic sprite is basically a thing, you can target up to three of your banished fiend monsters. I should summon this card from your hand, and if you do sh shuffle those banished monsters into the deck, so we get a chance to reuse them if necessary. During the end phase of this card is in the graveyard because it was destroyed by a monster in your monster zone by an opponent's card, which Runic obviously likes to do. I can special summon this card from the graveyard, then you can destroy a card your opponent controls up to the number of faceless bound traps you control with different names. Obviously, this was meant to use with the Destiny board cards, so it's pretty cool there. I mean, we have pendulum monsters, we have pendulum zones, we use pendulum monsters, and we use continuous spell cards, so this could actually be a good tech card for us against Sprite. I might go for it. Uh, Lava Golem is a card that we can use, I mentioned before, primarily because it's a fiend and it's fire. Chaos Hunters is something that we're definitely going to want to throw in now. So I'm going to generate two of these. Oops, two. Oh, <laughs> I got a royal finish. Uh, okay, cool. So now I have no choice but to run it. Look at that, Chaos Hunter royal finish. Uh, let's see here, another tech card that I wanted to try out is Vanity's Fiend. You can special summon, uh, you cannot be, cannot be special summoned. Uh, we don't necessarily normal summon because of, you know, all of our crazy effects and such, and we use a Throw Slime. So this card could be used as a last kind of ditch effort. Uh, you know, summon out uh, Wave King Zezer or summon out the other King Tell. Tribute that monster, get the search, and then normal summon this guy at the end of your combos. Since we can't special summon anymore, thanks to... Uh, or throws and other cards, for example. Um, you cannot, oh, this card says, yeah, you cannot special summon monsters except theme time monsters, not just DDD. So, yeah, we can definitely 
um, play any of our fiend cards, especially Vanity Fiend, since it's normal summons from Tribute. Another fun card is Phantom of Chaos. Your opponent takes no battle damage, which is fine. Target one effect monster in your graveyard. Banish that target. And if you do, until the end, face this card's name and original attack from that monster's name and original attack. And replaces their effect with that monster's original effect. So not only does this card become a DDD card, but it also takes that monster's effect. I can see that being fun with uh, taking in uh, the High Flame King Gingish. So let's throw him in there. Is it here? Nope. Yeah, there it is. So let's throw one in there. Uh, I don't see it using Wave Oblivion King Caesar Ragnarok in this format, so I'm not going to throw him in. I'm, I'm going to throw him in just in case we run into Numerons, you know, because they're a thing. What else can we use? I'm definitely going to throw in King Tell. I'm going to use Caesar. We already have... Uh, nope, we don't have... Oh, the Yuga is technically not a staple, but it can be. Oh, no, we already had it. Okay, that works. And then I'll think about the other cards later. But anyway, we're at 44 cards. I think we're okay. But again, as I mentioned before, runic sprites are a thing. And uh, that means we need to have a chunky deck. Let's take a look back at the cards here. We have Allure of Darkness. Allure actually works better now if we're throwing in DD Ghost. And we're also going to be using Cursed Necrofear. So that might be a fun combo to try. Uh, we have Skullmeister here. Cards activate in your opponent's graveyard. Uh, they don't really do that this format yet much and I don't really plan on using it. Uh, let's see here other cards that I have. Triple Tactics, Talents. We're definitely going to need this actually so let's give in at least two. We get another Royal. Nope I got a Glossy. Okay. For those of you guys interested in my Royal Hunting Guide I have the video uh, last month or two months ago that I have so check that out here. Another thing we can try out is Stygian Dirge against the Runic, I mean against the Sprites. Reduce all their levels by one, and essentially they can't do anything, which is pretty great. In the past, I've used Necrofusion to fusion summon from the graveyard. Normally, I end up throwing in Purple Armageddon or any of my other fun fusion cards. Fury Race map, should we throw that in there? Um, I want to say yes. Hold on a sec, let me think this through. Actually, I don't have enough materials to make a uh, Cursed Necrofear, unfortunately. Another card we can try using is Underworld Goddess, primarily since we can use one monster they control. It's actually fun them using this against us, because that means that we get an extra um, monster zone to Pendulum Summon from. Anyway, let's go back to DDDs to get my other fun staples out here. We got three of those. I'm going to throw in another dog. This is the card I primarily use in my TCG deck against Dash Tira. Good effect. Switches the monster at attack, defense monster uh, defense to zero whenever it attacks. Uh, and of course, I'm going to throw in my good old Laplace. That's 48 cards. Let's throw in two more. What else do we want to throw in here? We have one for one. Another card that I wanted to try out actually is Dark Spirit of Malice. When your opponent activates a card or effect, you can send this card from your hand to the four fields to the graveyard, then target one level eight fiend monster in your graveyard which we're going to have plenty of between the uh, Oblivions and not to mention we're going to have maybe one or two level 8s in the extra deck. I might throw in um, Beowulf or maybe another Viking Gengish. Anyway, uh, special summon, uh, special summon if its effects are negated, which is fine. Uh, if a level 8 Fiend monster is sent to your graveyard while this card's in your graveyard, you can add this card to your hand. You can only use the effect of Dark Sphere of the Malice per turn. So essentially you recycle level 8s, which is pretty straightforward because uh, your opponent's always going to use card or effects. And if they do it on your turn, even better, because now you can just activate this card, special summon your level 8 fiend, maybe go in for a Kali Yuga play, or maybe go in for a Doom Armageddon play, or if you have the level 2s, you know, you can go ahead and summon a Bright Armageddon. Where are you, Bright? There's Bright Armageddon, we can throw them in. 14 cards, we need one more. Let's see, what other extra deck card can we throw in here? Uh, we can throw in Oracle King. I don't suspect we're going to be taking a lot of effect damage, but just in case Brenda Destria rolls on that nonsense combo, let's throw in uh, Oracle King Dark. Oh, I already have one of these in here, so I don't need another one, which means I have one more. 
It probably has to be a fusion, right? So we already have that, that, that. Do we want a Beowulf? One DDD monster plus one DT monster. Uh, let's throw them in there. I mean, I already have two dogs in here, so I can definitely use them to summon the, the rank six. That's not a problem. That's 48 cards. We have three six traps. What else do we want here? We already threw in the Chaos Hunters. Uh, since our deck is a little bulky, let's throw in the Curry Race map. I do want to try um, my Dark Spirit of the Malice and Cursed Necrofear combo along with Allure of Darkness. Um, but I don't have enough URs. In two days I will because I'm going to be grinding. And thanks to the magic of editing, now we clearly have enough UR and SR materials. So here's the deck again. I mean, I'm not going to change it out. Let's do the 100 draw samples that I did before whenever I showed you guys that I made a new deck. So right now we only have Chaos Hunter, which is fine as the uh, non-DDD card that we have. So let's draw. So... I'm just going to basically count them out and then uh, in my fingers I'm going to count out the ones that do not uh, are, do not make for a decent hand. So, you know, keep that in mind. Just count them out. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, ooh, okay, first one, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, can't do anything with this, so that's three cards so far, 40, 41, 42, 43, that's four cards so far, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, so by, at 50 we have four, four opening hands that we couldn't really use. So let's see what we got here. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, it's 6. 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, oof, that's 7, 69, 70, 71, ooh, that's 8, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, it's 9, 86, 87, 88, that's 10. We've already reached 10%, so right off the bat, we don't have enough. This is not a good consistent deck. Usually I like to be under um, 
under 95. So this doesn't work. The reason why it doesn't work is most likely because of, I can't believe I'm saying this, Chaos Hunter. In the previous decks I had, it worked out nicer because I had a more uh, consistent way of getting cards out. So I would remove maybe one Chaos Hunter, throw in an additional Fury Race map. And what else can we do? That's 50 cards. Um, this is really hit or miss. It's not really good for when you do your counting, assuming you're going first and assuming you're playing a top tier player that has a really high chance of getting a hand trap, ideally a monster, and then you can use this card. So it's not really good as a benchmark for if your hand is good or not. So now that we got rid of one card and added a third and added a third race map, now we're going to do it again. So one, <laughs> the first card right off the bat, of course, it's not a good enough card. What can we do with this? We can't do anything with this hand. If we went second, we would have gotten this, but of course we're basing this off of going first. So the first one is our first uh, bad hand. So two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's another bad hand. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Okay, 50, we only have two bad hands, so we're better off than we were last time. 51, 52, 53, 54. Okay, another one. 55, 56, 57, 58. 8, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, bad one, 69 is bad guys, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. And of course, the 100 one is our fifth bad card. So now we have 95% uh, good opening hands or at the very least passable, where we can have a field presence enough to survive a turn, hopefully. In this case, nope, this would have been a bad one anyway. Um, you can negate something, but even if you somehow survive the turn with this type of hand, you still get the second Oblivion. Can we survive another turn? Nope, we would probably be dead if we were playing Diamond or any Tier 1 decks. So, 95% success rate, all because I dropped down one Chaos Hunter, and I threw in another Piri Race map. Throwing in the third Piri Race map made it a little bit more consistent with the draws. 
Granted, if you want to really go overboard and see if your hand would be good, you can do the 100 draws, <laughs> do it a thousand times and see and see how the number goes. But again, the more you do that, then the more uh, there's a good chance that, you know, one of your 100 draws is not going to really pan out to be well. But this is the deck that we have, Season 15 DDD version 1.0. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this. Let me know what you guys think of my process. Sorry, this video is a little bit long and a little bit unnecessary, especially in the middle where I was just kind of going off reading G Golem cards and other cards from the tier one, two, and three lists. Um, you just really want to make sure that A, the, your core is solid, your extra support cards are solid. And depending on how many runic uh, variants that I see, I'm going to make this into a 60 card deck, but for now 50 is enough for silver and gold. And we'll see where that takes us. So the next video is going to be my 10 duels using this particular deck. I'm not going to change anything unless I end up losing three duels in a row. So look forward to that. I'll try to do that by Monday and then we can continue our normal schedule of replays and hopefully one decent uh, discussion video per week. Thank you guys so much for following, liking, subscribing. Let me know what you guys think. Again, sorry for kind of like dragging out the middle of this uh, video, but I'll see you guys next time.